Hey folks, if you want to level extremely fast when the War Within launches, there are a number of important items that you should begin preparing right now. I'll start by going over the obviously good consumables such as gun shoes and goblin gliders, which have been universally beneficial for many years now. The impact of these items on the leveling route isn't quite as high as it has been in the past, since dragon riding trivializes the vast majority of outdoor mobility. Just like in Dragonflight, you'll have access to your dragon riding mount from the very start of the leveling process, and this is undeniably the fastest and easiest way to cover long distances. The primary use case now for gun shoes and gliders is covering shorter distances that would be inefficient to use your dragon riding vigor for. The same can be said about the Cracked Radnax Control Gem. In past expansions, I recommended stockpiling a ton of these, but this is no longer necessary. All that being said, it is worth noting that the very start of the expansion throws you into a phased version of Dalaran which prevents the use of both flying and ground mounts. Since Gunshoes and Radnax Gems are both usable within this introduction scenario, that actually makes them extremely important, as escaping Dalaran into Kazalgar will be one of the most important bottlenecks to avoid for launch day leveling. Another similar item that has long been a speedrunning staple is Tuft of Yakfer, but this one is a bit of an interesting case for the War Within. In years past, the Yakfer was effectively just an extra copy of Radanax Control Gem, except it doesn't negate your fall damage and it can't be used in areas such as the Dalaran Introduction. However, you may recall that during Mop Remix, the Yakfer was changed. It used to be unique with three available charges, but now the item is no longer unique and actually stacks up to 999. Since the Yak only has a 3 second cooldown, you can spam a near infinite amount of these items, provided you manage to stockpile enough of them. This is an absolute game changer for ground mobility on launch day. While you still aren't going to be using the Yak fur to cover long distances, as Dragon Riding has you covered, you can now slam a Yak fur any time you're required to walk for more than a few simple steps. In the past, this would have been seen as a waste, since the items only had a limited number of uses. But when you have a near unlimited number of charges, it suddenly becomes extremely efficient. With enough charges of the Yakfer, you basically get to roleplay as Taylor Swift with your very own furry, ground-based private jet. The final mobility item that I want to give an honorable mention to is the infamous Falling Flame. If you were around for Dragonflight's launch, you may remember that this item was incredibly important as it allowed you to save a ton of time during the first few minutes of the expansion. This made it the single most critical item to farm for Dragonflight leveling, which kinda sucked because farming this item is a massive pain in the ass. The good news is that Falling Flame is nowhere near as impactful for War Within leveling as it was for Dragonflight. It can still be used to save a few seconds here and there, as it is marginally faster than Dragon Riding for crossing extremely long distances, but the earliest spot that it may be useful is approximately 20 minutes into the leveling campaign. By that stage, you've either firmly established your lead ahead of the pack, or gotten bogged down by other players. So either way, a 5 to 10 second time save will mean very little. If you've completed every other step in this video, you could try to farm a Falling Flame, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend wasting your time. The other two topics I want to cover in this video are buff consumables and gear, but I'll start with the buff items since that's a lot more straightforward. When it comes to food, you have two options. Deviously Deviled Eggs offers the most primary stat, but Fried Bonefish, an item from Shadowlands, will grant you speed whenever you kill an enemy. If you're familiar with Bear Tartar from Legion, Fried Bonefish is just a slightly stronger version of the same buff. Generally speaking, I'd recommend using Bonefish, as the speed bonus will likely save you more time in the long run, but this will come down to personal preference. We have a similar situation when it comes to files, as one of them, Charged File of Alacrity, will grant you a passive speed bonus. If you choose to use a damage file instead, there are multiple solid options, but I would generally advise running Glacial Fury, as the proc effect works really well in a leveling context. It is worth noting that you can technically switch files instantly, so if you really want to min-max, you could keep a stack of speed files and only switch to them when you need to run a long distance. For the average player, I would simply recommend picking a single type of file and sticking with it for your entire leveling run. As for the remaining damage consumables, things aren't very interesting. You'll want to run whichever weapon rune gives you the best secondary stats with the choice of either crit, haste, or mastery. For potions, Shocking Disclosure is a great option for AoE, while Elemental Potion of Ultimate Power will provide a solid damage boost across the board. Finally, you should pick up a few Dreamwalker's healing potions in case of emergencies, and if you have the gold to spare, you can grab a few Draconic Augment runes for some bonus primary stat. Before we move on to the final subject of this video, I want to quickly touch upon guild experience banners, as they're very important but don't quite fit into any of the other categories. Assuming your guild has completed all of the necessary achievements, these banners can be purchased off the guild vendor in either Orgrimmar or Stormwind, depending on your faction. By throwing one down, you'll be able to gain additional experience from nearby mob kills, and while it's not much, free experience is never a bad thing. 
If your guild doesn't have one of the necessary achievements, you can always temporarily join another guild and leave once you've earned enough reputation and purchased all three banners. There's also a pretty helpful macro that you can use, which automatically places the most powerful banner that you have available. I'll put the full text of that macro in the pinned comment on this video. The final topic we'll be discussing is gearing, and this is something I normally don't discuss heavily in my prep videos because it's generally speaking a moot point. In the past, you either already had the best trinkets or weapons, or you're a returning player that won't have enough time to farm anything before the expansion launches. However, this is completely different now thanks to the bronze bullion system in Dragonflight Season 4. This currency is sometimes obtained whenever you kill a raid boss on any difficulty including LFR, and there's a rolling seasonal cap, allowing you to catch up to veteran players even if you're only returning a few days before the launch of the expansion. By spending 2 bronze bullion, you're able to purchase any trinket, weapon, or unique item of your choice that would normally drop from any of the Dragonflight raids. This means that you can easily farm your best-in-slot weapon and every single one of your best-in-slot trinkets before the launch of the War Within, and you can do this just by running a few LFR wings on a brand new character. On that note, getting the best possible trinkets will make your leveling journey significantly easier, so I'll take a moment to review which ones you should be spending your bullion on. When it comes to leveling, it's important to note that exiting combat will allow you to freely switch between any trinkets you have in your bags, and while this does trigger a 30 second shared cooldown, it still allows you to activate multiple unused trinkets within a short period of time. This means that you'll never want to equip two different unused trinkets at the same time while leveling. One slot should be dedicated to an entirely passive trinket, and you'll rotate unused trinkets for the other slot whenever you exit combat. This may sound a bit confusing, but in practice it's actually incredibly easy to do. You'll want to create a macro that says slash use 13 and then add this to your bars. This button will then automatically use whatever trinket is equipped in your 13th armor slot. You can then drag and drop each of your trinkets onto your bars and clicking these buttons will switch out the active trinket in that 13th armor slot causing the macro to automatically update. Just to make things simple, I'll put this macro in the pinned comment of the video so you can easily copy paste it for yourself. Regardless as to whether or not you plan on trinket swapping, here are the top 5 on use trinkets. First, and probably fairly obviously, Mana Grief Torch is completely broken when it comes to leveling. This thing does a monstrous amount of damage for both single target and AoE, so it's a must-have for every spec in the game. Even though Grief Torch only has agility and strength, it's still extremely powerful for caster DPS, and you'll be able to spend your bullion on any trinkets that you want, even if they don't have your primary stat. This applies to all of the other trinkets that I'll discuss in this video. In the vast majority of cases, their on-use effect is so powerful that you don't really care what their passive stats are. Next up, Beacon to the Beyond is just a slightly weaker version of Manic Grief Torch, but that still makes it an extremely powerful trinket for leveling. I generally prioritize using this trinket for single target, as the next few we'll discuss are notably better for AoE. Storm Eater's Boon, Enduring Dreadplate, and Bellarellos are all fantastic options for killing large groups of enemies, though each one comes with a unique downside. Boon does the most damage out of the three, but it roots you in place which makes it very difficult to use in certain situations. Enduring Dreadplate gives you a bit of damage reduction in addition to its massive AoE, which is nice, but it takes 15 seconds to fully activate, which means you'll have to time the explosion properly. Finally, Bellarellos does solid upfront burst damage which is comparable to Beacon, but it takes out a large chunk of your health. If you're playing a very geared character, this probably won't be an issue, but it could pose problems for squishy casters attempting to do a big AoE pull. Personally, I'd recommend choosing 2 out of 3 of these AoE-focused trinkets, with Bellarellos being a notably better option for casters due to its intellect, and vice versa for melee. This will allow you to switch between Grief Torch and Beacon for single target elite fights, and 2 of the AoE trinkets for gigantic pulls. Odds are, having more than 4 unused trinkets will be a tad overkill, as you should already be able to use one for every single pull. As for your passive trinket, there are multiple solid options that you can choose from. Regardless of spec, you can't really go wrong with anything that deals proc damage such as Cataclysmic Signet Brand or a passive stat bonus like Ominous Chromatic Essence. For agility and strength users, my personal recommendation would be All Totem of the Master. While this is technically a tank trinket, it'll proc very frequently during solo leveling, and these procs deal really good damage and provide you with some helpful buffs. Casters have it a little bit rough here, as the obvious choice for them is Tome of Unstable Power, which unfortunately is a dungeon drop that cannot be purchased with bullion. If you have the time to spare, this probably is worth farming for casters, but it's likely more time efficient to just grab a passive stat stick. Now, there are obviously many powerful weapons such as Fearloth, Rashon, or Dreambinder that you should spend your bullion on if it's powerful for your spec. However, this stuff is nowhere near as universal as my trinket recommendations, and this video is long enough as it is. 
That being said, I put out a detailed video towards the start of Season 4, which goes over the top bullion picks for every single spec, so I'd recommend checking that out if you want to learn more about how to spend your excess bullion. On a slightly different note, it's important that you obtain your spec's 4-piece bonus, as that's generally a massive damage increase. Just as with Bronze Bullion, getting your tier bonus is extremely simple in Dragonflight Season 4 thanks to the Revival Catalyst. Located in Eastern Thaldrassus, this machine allows you to quickly and easily convert eligible gear pieces into a Season 4 tier piece, and this includes all of the gear obtainable from the Radiant Echoes pre-patch event. This entire process takes less than 5 minutes, so I'd recommend doing it even on undergeared alts that you aren't trying to use for speed leveling. Last but certainly not least, we need to talk about speed sets. I've saved this topic for the end of the video because it's easily the most challenging thing to set up out of everything else I've discussed. However, it also has the potential to be the most important thing I cover in this video. If you're unsure what a speed set is, it involves equipping items with the speed tertiary stat, as this allows your character to run faster. Obviously, in a perfect world, you would have a high item level gear set that also happens to have speed on nearly every single item, but that's next to impossible due to how rare it is to roll speed on a piece that's actually good. For reference, on the character that I currently plan on leveling during launch, I have roughly 20% additional speed on my highest item level pieces, and I would actually consider this slightly above average despite the fact that the cap is all the way up at 49%. It's worth noting that I am using enchants such as Devotion of Speed on Bracers and Homebound Speed on Cloak, which obviously everyone else should be using as well. In practice, building a speed set actually involves finding or buying low item level pieces that just so happen to roll speed. In the vast majority of cases, speed sets will be useful when you're trying to cross long distances within indoor spaces that don't allow the use of consumables such as gun shoes. In these situations, it's not usually important that you're able to fight back against mobs, since your only goal is running from point A to point B. This means that the overall quality of your gear is irrelevant, and you can focus entirely on equipping items that boost your speed up to the cap of 49%. By creating different armor sets, you can freely switch between your normal gear and your speed gear while out of combat, making the process extremely easy. The reason why this is so important is because The War Within features multiple sections within its campaign that force you to run long distances inside of caves or instant scenarios. None of the aforementioned mobility consumables will help you in these spots, forcing you to rely entirely on class abilities or the raw speed on your gear. Again, preparing a speed set is infinitely more challenging than any of the other grinds discussed in this video, but you don't even need to reach the cap of 49% speed for it to be worthwhile. Even if you only manage to snag a few cheap speed items off of the auction house, it'll still end up saving you a lot of crucial time throughout the leveling process. As a final note, there is one very specific piece of gear which will prove invaluable for your speed set. Specifically, it is the 319 item level crafted boots from Dragonflight, such as Pioneer's Leather Boots, but there is a variant of this for every armor type. The main reason these boots are valuable is because of a very old enchant called Minor Speed, which increases your movement speed by 10%. It's worth noting that this 10% bonus is applied on top of any other increases that you can get from your speed stat, making it extremely valuable. Since Minor Speed can only be applied to gear of item level 320 or below, these 319 item level boots barely slide under the threshold, allowing them to receive the enchant. This would already make them a strong addition to generic speed sets that you swap to out of combat, but in this case, it's also usable in high item level gear sets due to a really cool interaction with the recrafting system. Once you've applied the enchant to these boots, you can then recraft it with an Enchanted Wuppling's Awakened Crest, increasing the item level up to 486. While this may still be on the lower end compared to endgame Dragonflight items, the fact that it keeps the minor speed enchant makes it more powerful for leveling than any other boots in the game. I would recommend running these boots even in gear sets that you'll use for combat, as an additional 10% speed while rounding up mobs will save you far more time for leveling than a slight boost to primary and secondary stats. While I've already covered a ton of stuff within this video, there are even more extremely min-maxi time saves that I opted not to include such as niche engineering gizmos and potential prequests that you can complete right now. I wanted to keep the focus of the video largely on preparation that the average player can complete within the next few days, but I've been actively discussing all my more min-maxi tricks over on my Discord. After posting this video, I plan to write up some detailed summaries about what wasn't mentioned in this video and pin it in the War Within leveling channel. Anyone is welcome to join my Discord completely for free, and the link to that can be found in the description below. If you found this video helpful, I'd highly encourage you to toss it a like, as that'll help other people find it as well.